Hello and welcome to another episode of the GDScript Fundamental Tutorial Series. In this episode, we will be talking about arrays. So what exactly is an array? Arrays are a collection of items stored at contiguous memory locations. What that basically means is that when stored in memory address, it's just done sequentially. Now, arrays are used when you want to store multiple items together. In Godot, arrays can contain elements of different data types, arrays, and dictionaries. So if you're new to arrays, you can think of an array as basically a line. You have someone in the front of the line, you have someone at the back of the line, and you have people in between. The person at the front of the line is at position zero. If you're second in line, you're at position one. If you're third, position two, and so forth. So as you can see here, this is a better representation of what an array actually looks like. Now a value inside an array is called an element and the position of the array is called an index position. As you can see here, the index position starts at zero for our first element, the index position of one for our second element, and it continues like that. However, keep in mind that you can also use inverse index positions when you want to start at the back of your array. In this case here, if you want the last element of your array, you'll use negative one as your index position. And if you want the second to last item in your array, you'll call that index position of negative two. This is also referred to as an inverse index position when using negative numbers. Declaring an array in Godot is fairly straightforward. You declare a variable as you would any other variable. However, when you assign it a value, you use square brackets. As you can see here, to declare an empty array, as our first example shows, you just use square brackets with nothing inside. However, if you want to declare an array with predetermined values, you'll simply just go ahead and type them out. Keep in mind that in GDScript, your arrays can have different data types. One thing to keep in mind is that all elements in your array must be separated by commas. Now, let's go ahead and look at retrieving data from an array. Retrieving data from an array is fairly straightforward. All you have to do is just type out the variable name. Now, if you type out the variable name, what you're gonna get is the entire array returned back. However, if you just want a specific value or rather a specific element at a specific index, you simply type out the variable name followed by square brackets with the element position inside the bracket. In the second example, what you're saying is that we're going to get a value from the index position zero. And in our first example, that would just be the value one. Moving on, many programming languages, including GDScript, you can put arrays inside an array. When you put an array inside an array, those are called subarrays. Depending on how many layers of the arrays, they could also be called two-dimensional arrays, three-dimensional arrays, and so forth. To create a subarray, all you have to do is use the square brackets followed by another pair of square brackets. However, what gets tricky with subarrays is when you want to get back a value. As you can see here, we are getting the first element, or rather the element at index position zero, which would be this right here. The first element would be another array. But if we want to get a specific value from that array, we're gonna have to use a second pair of brackets to declare what position in the second array we want to get from. In this case, we want to get the value from the index position of one, which would just be the number two, remembering that elements start at an index position of zero, and zero would be the integer value one. One cool thing about GDScript is that arrays come with methods. You have the push method and the pop method. You may find yourself using these two most of the time. Now a push method adds an element to either the beginning or the end of an array. The pop method removes and returns an element from the beginning or end of an array. Let's go ahead and take a look at a quick example. As you can see here, we've declared a very basic array with values one, two, three, four, and five. In GDScript, we have to declare where we want to push or where we want to pop. In this case, in the first example, we are going to pop back, which just basically means remove the last element of our array and return it. In this case, we have nothing to return it to, so it just removes the last element. As you can see here, our array only has four 
values now. We've removed the five. Now, if you want to remove an element from the front of an array, you'll use the pop front method. So you can see here, once we use the pop front method, we removed the element at the index position of zero. Now, if we want to add elements to the beginning or end of the array, we use the push method. In the third example, you can see that we're going to push back an integer five, which just basically means add five to the end of the array and push front to add an element to the beginning of an array. Another method you may find yourself using is the clear method. However, in GDScript, there are three ways to clear an array. The first way is the very obvious, declaring a new empty array to your existing variable. In this case, you can see here in the first example, we are assigning an empty array to an already created variable named arrays. The second way to clear an array is by using the resize method. Keep in mind that the resize method is when you want to basically shorten an array by declaring how long you'd like the length to be. In this case, what we're saying is we want to resize our array to have a length of zero, which essentially just means an empty array. The third example shows the most intuitive way to clear an array, which is just to call the clear method. All three are viable examples of how to clear an array. However, my preferred method would be to use the clear method. Moving on, let's look at how to duplicate an array. To duplicate an array, all you have to do is use the duplicate method. What the duplicate method does is it essentially returns back a copy of your array. There are two types of duplication in GDScript. You can have deep duplication or shallow duplication. In other programming languages and including GDScript, this is also referred to as a deep copy or a shallow copy. To do a shallow copy in GDScript, all you have to do is set the Boolean value to your duplicate method to false. Now, just in case you don't understand the difference between a deep copy and a shallow copy, a deep copy is when all nested arrays and dictionaries are duplicated and will not be shared with the original array. A shallow copy, however, references to the original nested arrays and dictionaries are kept so that modifying a subarray or dictionary in the copy will also impact those referenced in the source array. What that essentially means is a deep copy, if you were to change a value in a subarray and that was assigned to a different variable, changing that other variable will not affect your current variable. However, if you were to shallow copy, affecting the subarray from a different variable will change the value of your current variable. Last, let's go ahead and take a look at getting the length of an array. Getting the length of an array is very simple. All you have to do is call the size method and that will return an integer back to you. You can think of a size method as returning the last index position plus one. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at some coding. So as you can see here, we have a simple GD file. At the top, you can see I have declared two arrays, an empty array and a simple array. Declaring an array is fairly straightforward. The same can be true with a subarray. In this case, you can see brackets are inside brackets. And of course, when we want to retrieve a value from a specific index, we have to use double brackets because in our subarray, we have two brackets, one for the outer array and one for the inner array. Here, I have an example of pushing to an array. So you can see here, we're pushing to the front the integer value zero, and we're pushing to the back an integer value six. If you want to pop an array, you just use the pop front or pop back method. As you can see here, we're going to not only remove an element, but we're going to return its value. So as you can see here, we have a variable we just declared, and we're assigning it a value from the array that we are removing. So if you want to remove an element and assign that value to a variable declaration, using the pop method is a great way. As you can see here, we are also doing it for the back or rather the last element of the array as well. Now, over here, we have three different ways to clear an array. The first way is to assign an existing array, an empty array. 
The second, more intuitive way is to just call the clear method. And the third way is to just resize your array to have a length of zero. Basically, the clear method is just the resize method, at least to the Godot documents, at least, or at least to the Godot documents, that is. Now over here, we are duplicating. This is a deep copy. As you can see, we are using the duplicate method and we are assigning the value true to let the compiler know that we want a deep copy. What this means is if we were to take an array and push a new value into it, as you can see here, the new array is being pushed a value of three towards the back of the array. And that new array has been pushed to our simple array then deep copy doesn't change its value, but simple array does. Now, if you were to do what's called a shallow copy, all, we, all you would have to do is assign the duplicate method with the false Boolean. And this lets the compiler know that you want a shallow copy. What that essentially means is if we have another array and we add a value, that value will change the value in shallow copy as well as simple array. Now, last but not least, we have the method to get the length of the array. To get the length of the array, all you have to do is just call the size method. Well, this was just a brief overview of how to use arrays in code. Please go ahead and download the GitHub project that I have put a link to in the description area of this video. When you download the file project, go ahead and press the play button to see the values printed out to the screen so you can get a better understanding of how arrays can be manipulated. Well, that's all I have for this episode. I hope to see you in the next.